My name is Bertie Simon and I'm a proud Biripai girl, currently living on the Gold Coast, but I'm originally from Wollongong. I'm Caden Smales, I'm a Baladong Noongar man living on Gubby Gubby land and I'm a surfer. Hey, I'm Joe, I'm a proud Bunjalung man, I currently live on Gombengia country in Coffs Harbour. For this camp that we're running this weekend, the First Nations High Performance Program, uh, culture was something that we wanted to embed from the very beginning of the camp. Woman Deca Kirat means welcome, my friends. And every time that you are on country, you are uh, connected to this beautiful ocean. It's so beautiful down here at Phillip. Like, I've never been here before, so being here with all the boys and all the girls and brothers and sisters and I really love the untouched feeling of Philip and how they've really looked after this land. At Phillip Island I was really surprised with how like warm it was. I thought it would be like heaps colder because it's so far down the coast from where we are. Coming to the first car park at Woolmine is a surfboard there that represents all our surfers on the island as they're connected in in ways like our First Nations people. The message there is about preserving, respecting, preserving our country. Trying to leave a message for our young generation is always think about the footprint that you're leaving for your grandkids. That's what it's about. Us mob getting together wherever we are, we've got that ocean, ocean blood in us. And hopefully today he's got some pretty deadly waves. There's plenty of swell. Looks like it's cleaning up a little bit actually. I'm a saltwater girl, so when I'm in the ocean, I feel so connected to my culture and to my people, my ancestors. Yeah, it makes me happy. We decided to bring the first camp to Victoria because one, we had the amazing opportunity of working with uh, Urban Surf and giving these young people such an amazing day at the pool, surfing the waves there, which a lot of them hadn't got to do before. But also, like we, we hold the Australian Indigenous titles in Victoria, so to give them that experience of flying down, coming to a location pretty far from a lot of their homes, it was just another amazing opportunity. I was super excited to be a part of this crew, and it's really cool to have not just uh, people like my brother here, but people I've never met before from around Australia and they've been able to share their culture as well and what tribe they're a part of. It's made so many new friends while I'm here and it's just it's such a great opportunity for everyone. And real eye opener, I think, for a lot of people who are just beginning their cultural journey and a bit involved in the community, but I could definitely do a bit more and that's kind of opened up and inspired me to go a bit further. At day one at Urban Surf, we had our Billabong team rider, Otis Carey, who is an amazing Indigenous surfer, but also an Indigenous surfer that so many of these kids look up to. He's arguably one of Australia's best free surfers. The ranges that he puts out with Billabong with all his artwork on it, like does so much to promote our culture. So to have Otis at Urban Surf was such an amazing element to the camp. Um, and it really meant a lot to these kids. There's nothing ever been really like this available for Indigenous surfers. So for me, as like, you know, I'm in my mid thirties now. If I had this when I was younger, I would have just, I felt like I would have excelled in, you know, personal life and in my surf life. It's just a great way for Indigenous kids to connect with other Indigenous surfers as well, because there's not many of us around. Urban Surf's just such a good place to practice and it's awesome that we have people like Clancy down here to give us tips and make us better surfers, so it's really awesome. Perfect wave over and over and over again and you could just pretty much just do whatever you wanted. If you had a section or a kind of a turn you wanted to learn, you could just do, you do it over and over again until you got it perfect. We all had it to ourselves, like we had one, we surfed the left when we first got there and then the right like later on in the day and it was just so sick, like we had it to ourselves, just catching wave after wave, and yeah, it was so fun, perfect wave. We went down to the beach this morning at uh, Cape Woolamai and went and saw Steve for the first time and we did a smoking ceremony there and he welcomed us to the country that uh, he owns and he's lived on his whole life and so is his ancestors and our ancestors. And something that I want to highlight is through our whale song lines, they carry our ancient stories and gatherings. Um, so it's about when they migrate down, up and down the coast, when they come through your place, it's about us getting together and trading 
and keeping that ongoing. We just did a welcome to country, smoking ceremony, cleansing ceremony for all the participants so uh, they can leave any bad um, energy behind and the smoke. But also too bringing waters from their shorelines and bringing them together, mixing them together and through a ceremony and bringing our ancestors together as well. He showed us uh, their totem animal and I was really stoked to hear from people, especially like Jodie Barsby, about her story and how she's still discovering as well as what all of us Grummies are. So it was really cool to see that we're not the only people that are learning in, on this journey and it's basically everyone that is on this camp that's learning as well. We do need to you know, provide guidance and nurture and that way these kids in particular at the age that they're at now, you know, just keep guiding them because that's what they need. And big kudos and that, you know, like to, to the committee and Surfing Australia as well for it to, you know, to make this happen. And I'd love to see, like in the future, to see more of these camps and that happening and get more like Indigenous surfers and that involved. Cultural identity is really important because a lot of culture has been lost with the stolen generation so it's really important to celebrate indigenous culture and just to share it with not only like indigenous people but just all of all Australians. We also had a, a really cool experience with, with Kyle Vandercott. Uh, he was uh, you know gracious enough to come down and have a talk about his cultural identity but also his cultural story about how he found his way back to his cultural heritage. It's so cool to like hear all the mentors like stories because like some of them are only just learning like Scott was telling us that he's learning a bit more about his language and he was like saying a couple words and telling us what they meant and yeah it was so cool just to know that he's still learning and we have plenty of time to learn about our culture. This camp's not only about becoming a better surfer, but it's about becoming a better Indigenous person and being able to learn so we can pass on to the next generation of people. And I'm really appreciative of this camp and super stoked to be here. Yeah, this is a camp that I'd definitely like to see happening more because this is the first one that they've ever had. So with the new generations coming up, it'd be really good for all the young Indigenous kids to experience it, learn more about their culture and learn more about surfing and just improve them as a person. What we've seen over the last three days is, is a really bright future for Indigenous surfing on both sides with the boys and the girls. They've shown, you know, discipline. They've shown, you know, that they really want to listen and learn as much as they possibly can. And, you know, this group's become a really tight-knit family, so. You know, three days is, is really all you need to create sort of the, the bond that these guys already have.